What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangeli here with part three of the beginner series. We're going to talk about the shops, the stores, where you spend your resources, because there's a lot of them, there's a lot of resources, there's a lot of bottlenecks, and I just want to give you an understanding of what you should expect from each store. We're going to start with the store that's available the second you start playing, which is the gold store. Now, this store is going to have different materials as you progress through the game. As you reach certain levels, you'll be able to see more things available, but ultimately, this is the store. The first thing you're going to come across is gear pieces for gold. Starting very low, you're going to see some green and purple gear. That'll be at the top. You'll find a couple of pieces of purple gear that cost cores. Try to avoid these if possible. You'll see five character shards, the one row of five character shards, sometimes ten for between 450 and 900 credits or power cores. Ultimately, these are kind of a waste. You also probably want to avoid these unless it's like the last five you need and you're pretty flush with power cores. But for the most part, this store is fundamentally where you're going to be spending most of your gold when you have to spend gold. Uh, there are some items that you're going to buy too many of at the beginning of the game just because you know you're going to need them. For example, green items. There's a lot of characters. You need a lot of these. You get it. Uh, blue items become a little bit less difficult as time goes on, but early on you'll probably still need a couple of them. And then, as far as we can tell right now, purple and gold items are still purchased quite literally all the time. So, as far as the stores go, this is primarily where you're going to be spending most of your gold outside of, like, you know, upgrading characters themselves. Then we have the orbs. There's really not much to discuss in orbs. This is where most of the orbs in the game go, especially if there's a specialty orb or a seasonal or an event or something. You can kind of just keep track of where they are along this list and open them as you need. Now, the one rule of orbs is very simple. If the orb has something you need right now, open it. That's it. Don't worry about it. If there's gold and you need gold to level up a character right now or to buy something right now, not theoretically, like right now, do it. If the premium orb, if you don't have characters at seven star, open premium orbs. There's not a lot of reason to save orbs. You'll hear a lot of people say that. In general, the orbs you want to save, which we'll get into as we go on, are orbs that don't immediately impact your roster because there's a high probability those orbs can be changed or altered in the future, which will make them worth more in the future when you open them. There's a whole bunch of other theories regarding being in a good seed that we're not going to get into right now because I don't want to waste anyone's time. So this is pretty much the main shop, the gold shop, uh, and you're going to spend a lot of your time in this store. The second store is the Blitz store. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice as you go in is the massive amount of characters in this store. This is primarily what you're going to use to unlock characters that get you to legendaries. Rhino, Mantis, Ant-Man, Toad, Electro. All of these are characters that you can target farm based on how often you blitz. Now, in the early game, blitz is a little bit difficult. You don't have a full roster, but your blitz credits are best served getting characters in the store to about four or five star before shifting gears and opening specialty orbs moving up a little bit you'll see that they have ways that you can accrue catalyst parts this is a little bit more mid to end gamey this is after you've pretty much unlocked and, and invested in all the characters you need to from this store uh reasonable to kind of dump your credits here but not necessarily a priority like don't spend your large amount of currency on these, it's very hard to come by these, especially the earlier in the game you are. Last is the ward energy refill and defense boost. I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, war is its own game mode that starts at level 40, I think. And honestly, if you're at level 40 and you're capable of doing more than eight attacks in a war, power to you. You know, it's, it's very unlikely that you or your opponents are going to be uh, able to hit that many times so as a result you really aren't racing to full clear like you aren't getting all your attacks in as quickly as possible uh so until that point happens until it's 
reasonable for you and your alliance to do that. Please stay away from defense boosts and war energy refills. They kind of waste your currency, especially if there are characters you need at stronger value, because I'd rather win the war fights I go in than have more war fights, if that makes sense. And you can do that by investing in key characters. Moving to the orbs of the store, there's Blitz orbs, which are absolutely phenomenal after you've gotten the characters you want from target farming, not before, because there's like 25 characters in the Blitz store or something. It's not that many, but you know what I'm saying. There's so many that even though it is a cheaper deal, your chance of getting characters that you particularly don't care for, like maybe Ravager Boomer or Aim Monstrosity or Gamora, is equal to the chance of you getting something else. Now, the good thing is Blitz Orbs have a special Blitz character that's usually only available in these orbs. Like, you can't farm them. You might be able to find them in premiums or something. But ultimately, Blitz Orbs are relatively good, safe, and they give you a decent chunk of gold, about an average of 5,000 every time you open an orb. It's not a bad way to spend it, but for me, I think that if there's a character you need for a legendary unlock or for a really important team, target farm them up to five. After you have most of that store up to five, that's when you could start opening Blitz Orbs. Other than that, you're just kind of wasting the resources. Even though you're getting good value for what you spend, not all character shards are created equal, and five A Monstrosity shards is not the same as five uh, Electro shards, for example. And then there are these. These come from completing milestones. Why they're in the Blitz store, nobody knows. But these will accrue uh, specific origin type gear for your characters. Uh, as it is, you're always going to be working on somebody beginning, middle, and end game. So. You could save these for you to really want to start dumping into one particular type, or you can open whichever one you want. A lot of times people will say they'll open the purple catalyst orbs because they're out of catalysts. All reasonable. There's no problem with these. Save them, open them. As long as you have a need for the gear, you have no problem with that. Raid store, very similar to the Blitz store, uh, except it's on a rotation. So there are four character slots in the raid store. I think it starts at three and moves to four, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, and these characters are in a complete rotation. Sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. Usually you'll see one a day if you see all three refreshes. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Newer characters tend to show up more frequently, but they are pretty decent. Now these take raid credits, which you accrue from completing raid nodes and raid milestones. The next is again... Uh, whatever your highest gear tier you can attain is. So for me right now, because I'm at max level, I can get orange gear. Most people are probably only going to see purple gear until about level 60 anyway. And then you have blue gear. Now, in general, you are very, very, very hard off to buy blue gear with raid credits. Raid credits uh, are pretty good for getting purple gear and relatively good for target farming characters. So as a rule, if I see a character I want, I buy it. If I don't, I go down and I look to see if there's any gear I need right now, and I buy that. If I don't, that's fine. Uh, I try to keep a decent bank of raid credits in case a bunch of stuff I need shows up in the store. Usually between five and 8,000 raid credits I save up, but sometimes you're just not that lucky. Uh, moving to orbs. Um, orbs have a weird kind of, of setup too. So the raid orbs are exactly the same as Blitz orbs, but uh, infinitely worse because the range of characters in the raid store are way further apart. So there's roughly the same number of characters, a little bit less than in the Blitz store, but there are characters that are incredibly amazing in the raid store, and there are characters that are poo-poo. So when you open a raid orb, which I'll open right now to show you, you're guaranteed to get about seven character shards. I'm sorry, nine character shards, five in the middle, and then two on each side, which is a grand total of nine character shards, which is definitely more than five character shards. But again, if you look at what just happened here, I got five Thor, which was good, and then some Ravager Stitcher and some Hydra Grenadier. These two shards do not equal what else I could have gotten. Now, reverse this, and if I had gotten two, five of him and two of Thor, this orb is terrible. So... Again, you can open these. I wouldn't spend credits too often on them. As I said before, maybe 
You look in the store, if there's a character you want, you buy it. If not, go ahead and build the raid orb. There's a lot of target farms you're going to want to have. That's somebody who you're working directly towards. Prioritize those. Don't roll the dice and hope you get lucky on there. After you get the things you want out of the raid store, that's when you can feel comfortable spending them on raid orbs. But you will accrue raid orbs every raid season anyway, so you'll get a decent amount of tries anyway. Uh, moving to blue gear, purple gear, and orange gear raid orbs. As you complete raids, you will get these. As I've said before, sometimes you need a bunch of them. Sometimes you don't need too many. Open them as you need to. They really don't change too often, even though I think they might be changing soon. Uh, orange elite orbs are for completing the hardest raids in the game. And then we have the Greek raid orbs, which are specialty to the Greek raids themselves, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. That's why they're called Greek raids. You'll accrue them here. So overall, the raid store itself is probably the best place to get decent gear early game and target farm a handful of characters. Next, we have the arena store. The arena store is incredibly simple. Buy characters. That is the only thing to do. The that That is it. You just buy characters. Start with whichever character you need to farm for whatever. Move your way up. Uh, the only orbs in the arena store are Kingpin's Vault orbs, uh, in which you can get Kingpin, which nobody wants, and an arbitrary amount of other gear, which isn't great. So, you've seen people buy these. I have 30,000 credits, and I'm still not buying these, because what's in these isn't worth what... I could save and wait for the next character to come in. That's just my approach. If you want to open these orbs and take your chance and gamble, you are welcome to. But I don't think there's anybody in the world who thinks Kingpin orbs are good value. I think they're just acceptable for what you can use. But there's plenty of characters in this store. Uh, if you can get to top 500 every day, uh, you should be able to buy three characters every two days. You get 250 credits for completing your two attacks every day, and then you'll get... 500 every day for coming in top 500 that's 1500 every two days you can buy three characters every two days that's kind of keeping you in the uh in the positive economy to keep you going in the right direction with these characters but fundamentally this is the simplest store buy characters nothing else uh we have war store now and war store is its own video but i'm gonna make it really quick uh the characters in the war store are usually among the best characters in the game the war store also usually has the best value per purchase of ability materials. So four of these incredibly rare items for 1400. Uh, one of these relatively rare items for 62. And the same here, 800 for a 10 drop, which is vastly superior to what you get out of the raid store. So you're getting decent uh, income for what you're spending, but the currencies only come three times a week when you complete your one, two, and third war. That's the only way to manage it. So for every time you see a character that you want to buy for thirteen seventy-five, there's usually a really good value of gear somewhere that's also hard to buy. So when it comes to the war store itself, this is the store with the best items and the best uh, value for what you get, but the resources are the scarcest, so just be very careful uh, don't feel bad about not farming a character in the store or not farming gear in the store. You'll figure out what works for you and what you need. Uh, at the very bottom of the store, oh, also never buy blue. At the very bottom, you'll see a way to spend excess Stark Tech credits. And I say excess because you have to max out your Stark Tech. Yes, even the garbage ones before you go on. Now, if we haven't talked about Stark Tech yet, it's a percentage boost to all of your character's stats up to from 1 to 25%. Uh, including focus, damage, health, resistance, same as ISO 8s do. We'll go into that in another video. But ultimately, after you've completed that task, you can spend your excess alliance credits on more war credits, elite war credits, or elite four orbs. That's up to you, but you really do want to max out your Stark tech. Uh, as for orbs, uh, all of these come from completing wars. Uh, I would never open a blue gear one. I would sometimes open a purple gear one, but you really do want to stick to the orange gear war orb and eventually the orange gear war orb too after you hit level cap and start doing some end game stuff. These are the two that are really worth it. You really get enough blue gear that you don't have to waste it on this, but these two purple and orange, that's where you're going to get a good bulk of your purple and orange gear as you progress. Even then, I would 
prioritize orange a little bit more, it's one of the best ways to get them in the game. Uh, moving to the Red Star store, this store is terrible. Uh, the efficiency is awful. You very rarely get a decent amount of credits. And when you do, you really don't have to upgrade that many characters. Now, there are about maybe 10 total characters in this game that are absolutely phenomenal with high red stars. And then everything else kind of goes down. So you want to make sure that when you do this, uh, you're, when you spend your credits, it's on somebody who's not just good now, who's going to be good in the future. Now, that said, in the early stages of the game, what you're going to notice is you don't have a lot of red stars. So I do say buying one or two red stars on pretty much any character in the game is a reasonable purchase only because the way red star orbs work is if you pull a duplicate you get more credits towards an elite four which is a guaranteed four red star which as you pull duplicates you'll get an elite five it's like the itsy bitsy spider crawls up the water spout and then you pull it and then you start over from scratch but basically the more characters you have any red stars on the more duplicates you'll get, which will pull better red stars, which over time will feed on. Now, I'm not saying that's the best strategy, but I have never had a problem buying one or two red stars on specifically decent characters. Anyone with a name, anyone that's not a minion, really. And then kind of balancing out from there, especially because one red star is what you get every day for doing your alliance donation or one you know, red star silver credit promotion will do it. So you should be OK. Uh, the four one is a little bit more hard that's about one every five days you could get a two red star character as you're going on early you're going to be getting as many red star orbs as you can you should be able to figure out a reasonable way to do it that's up to you uh, last we have the ion store uh, ne almost never buy anything in this store ions are way more precious than the ability to buy these because ions are used for iso eights you will however get an arbitrary amount of basic ions a day the best thing you could pull out of them is a nine drop this is a three so it's pretty good honestly don't even worry about what you pull just open them and then start applying them to characters as you see fit uh you can pretty much always ignore the ion orb and the premium tier one iso orbs uh these don't matter none of this matters uh this might matter in the future as we get tier two but for now not sure last but not least we have the ultra store there is supposed to be one more store coming we'll find out more about that in the future uh the ultra store is what happens after you've started getting maxed out characters seven star characters and starting pulling duplicates you get ultra credits ultra credits uh will help you spend the store so the first thing and the most important thing in this store is ultimus orbs ultimus orbs are 15 character shards of a decent pool of characters and it's the only way to get Ultron in, I'm sorry, Ultimus in the game. Uh, the character pool on Ultimus orbs are pretty okay. If you don't have maxed out characters or that many maxed out characters, this is still the best way to use these. Even for me, this is still the best. Then they have these ridiculously priced orange gear catalyst orbs for gear tier 14 gear that is uh, used to be relevant and no longer is. Uh, I don't know anybody who's buying these right now. I don't know whales who are buying these right now. When they came out, they were popular, and now they're completely useless because Gear Tier 14 gear is nowhere near as difficult as Gear Tier 15 gear. That's something they have to fix over time. The last is they have a supply store. Just don't even look at the store because you might need a handful of these and then waste what can literally come out to 30 to 50 character shards out of the two Ultimus orbs if you want to buy something from here. Those Ultimus, even in your worst day, these are still worth less than 15 random character shards. You know, especially the chance of characters if you don't have maxed out. So the Ultimus store came out and uh, made Ultimus orbs better by putting in worse things. Don't really pay too much attention to this store. It's really not important. Uh, a lot of times people will let their ultra credits accrue and then do something waiting for something new to come. But... That's just not likely. Anyway, that's a review of all of the stores for a new player. Hopefully, you guys can kind of sort it through and, and figure out what the best strategies for you are. Hopefully, the advice was helpful. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I will catch you later.